angels, it's Haley Reese and welcome to or welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am so grateful that you are here and I hope that you are having an absolutely fantastic morning, afternoon, or night, whatever it is for you when this video finally reaches you. Today's video has been so highly requested. In a previous video, we dove into absolutely horrifying true night shift stories. And since that video, I have been getting so many requests by some of you to get into even more night shift horror stories. But more specifically, night shift horror stories that are true and terrifying. Now, I personally have never worked a night shift somewhere, but I have been to some places alone at night. And when you hear things, especially in the night or when there's nobody else around, it is all the more terrifying. But what happens when you're on the clock and you're experiencing these things where you have a obligation to see that shift through and to come out of that shift safe? Well, today we are diving into three terrifying night shift horror stories with individuals who wished they could have ran, but didn't have the luxury to do so. Before we get into today's video, I am so excited to share today's video sponsor with you guys, and that is June's Journey. Now, if you've been on my channel for a while, you guys would know that I've partnered up with June's Journey in the past, and I absolutely adore them, but you would also know how much I love playing June's Journey. June's Journey is a hidden object mystery game with a captivating detective story, taking you back to the glamour of the 1920s with a really awesome cast of diverse characters. Each scene takes you deeper into an absolutely thrilling murder mystery, taking the main protagonist, June Parker, on a quest to solve the murder of her sister and unravel her family's many secrets. The game is honestly so much fun to play and is available for free on mobile devices, Androids and iOS, and on desktop through Amazon and Facebook. In the short five years since the release of June's Journey, they have accumulated over 30 million fans worldwide, and after playing for the first time, I could definitely see why. I find the game genuinely relaxing and the perfect amount of challenging. It's not hard, but it definitely keeps you on your toes and wanting more. I honestly believe that you guys will love June's Journey just as much as I do, so make sure to click the link at the very top of my description or scan my QR code that I will have on the screen right here for you. Download June's Journey today. I promise you guys will absolutely adore it. And thank you so much to June's Journey for partnering up with me for today's video, but beyond that, for keeping me occupied. But without further ado, let's get into these three chilling terrifying, true, night shift horror stories. Now this first story begins with a man named Grayson. At the time of this occurrence, Grayson had just turned 24 years old and moved across state to be with his long-term girlfriend. The two of them had been doing long distance for a couple of years and were ready to take their relationship to the next level. Now her job was very secure where she lived, but Grayson had kind of jumped from gas station to gas station as his dad owned a couple of gas stations. It was his very first job and because he was so good at it and it kind of ran in the family line, he just continued working at gas stations. Now when the two of them had discussed him moving across state, it made most sense for him to move to his girlfriend as it as it would be relatively easy for him to get a gas station job there as well. The minute that he moved there, he started applying to all different gas stations and finally landed a part-time day shift at a gas station not too far from his home. For the first couple of months, he absolutely loved working there. He got to know the employees that he worked with, but almost on a surface level was how he described it. None of them really got into their personal lives, but they were able to just talk, you know, hang out with one another when they would work together and build relationships. And one guy in particular that he had taken a liking to was a man named Marshall. Now Marshall was an older man and he only worked there on occasional days throughout the week, particularly in the evening, 
cleaning up the gas station. Marshall was a family friend of the owners and he was supposed to have been retired at this point in his life, but he wanted a little bit of extra income and also to get out of the house. So they had hired him to do some cleaning a couple nights a week at the gas station. Now Grayson said that he really liked Marshall because he had positive energy and kind eyes. But again, he hadn't really spoken with Marshall on a deeper level. Now a few more months go by, Grayson's still enjoying working there, and one of the employees that works the night shift falls incredibly sick. At this point, Grayson's boss, who was also the owner, came to him and said that he'd been doing such a phenomenal job that he was far more ahead than the other new employees and asked him if he'd be willing to cover the night shift full time at this point for the employee that was sick. And Grayson was super excited about this because one, it was going to be more income, but two, he felt like it would be just a very chill job. He'd be able to just hang out there, have the occasional people come by for gas throughout the night, and that would be it. Now Grayson said that he felt pretty secure at the gas station that he was working at because at night after a certain hour they would lock up within the gas station and they would have to pay either through this glass or pay at the pump. That was kind of the, the protocol for this gas station. So he never really worried about anything bad happening while he was there or getting robbed so to speak. He was very comfortable in the job and a few weeks went by and he was doing a phenomenal job job. At this point, it was made clear to everybody at the gas station that the employee whom Grayson was covering for was not going to be able to make it back to work anytime soon. He had fallen very ill and due to doctor's orders, he was meant to be on bed rest. So at this point, Grayson was offered the job for the foreseeable future should it be something that he was interested in. And he was really quite liking the night shift. So he decided to take it on as a full-time role. Grayson said that for a few months, everything was normal. It was as if he'd been working at the same gas station for years, and he was getting to know the local community as well. But one night, everything would change. Grayson said on this particular night, it was raining and storming quite a bit, just setting that ambiance already, when all of a sudden he heard a banging on the outside of the glass doors. Now at this point of the night, the doors were already locked and nobody was supposed to come inside of the gas station. So he goes to his speaker and tells the girl that she needs to go and pay at the pump or she needs to pay here, but that they're not open for her to come inside. At which point he looks up and realizes there's not a car in sight. The entire parking lot is empty and there are no cars at the gas pumps either. It was as if this girl didn't hear him as she just kept banging and banging and banging on the door. Grayson described the girl as having long, dark hair that was obviously soaking wet from the rain, a very pale face with bags under her eyes, and a purple long dress that was soaked and was sticking to her skin. He said that the longer that she kept banging on the door and ignoring him speaking through the speaker, he started to have a bad feeling. So he decided to walk towards the door and ask the girl what was going on. As he walked towards the door, the girl acknowledges him and starts banging even harder saying, please, I need to come inside, I need to come inside. At this point, Grayson looks outside and doesn't see anybody else, doesn't think anything dark of it and unlocks the door to let the girl in to find out what was wrong with her. He said the girl started pacing back and forth and asking him what time it was, to which he told her the time. He asked her what was wrong and she said that her car had broken down up the street and her dad was coming to get her, but that she was panicked because that was a brand new car and she thought that he was going to kill her. She was super stressed out about what her dad was going to think. Grayson said she kept pacing, she kept pacing and she kept saying like, my dad should be here, where's my dad? My dad should be here, where's my dad? and Grayson started to get a little bit worried. Grayson asks her where her dad should be and what time he's expected to be picking her up, to which she said that her dad works there. At this point, Grayson's a little bit confused because nobody else was supposed to work this shift with him at this hour, and nobody had mentioned that somebody that worked there was supposed to be getting somebody. He said that he asked her who her father was, to which she replied, Marshall. Marshall being one of his absolute favorite employees. Now he was confused because Marshall had never mentioned having a daughter, 
but again, they hadn't gotten deeper than surface level conversations, so he assumed that it just hadn't been brought up in passing yet. Now at this point, he goes to grab the mop while they wait for Marshall to come and pick her up because now there's like footprints all throughout the gas station with puddles and like muddy water. As he returns with the mop, he realizes that the girl is nowhere in sight. But beyond that, he realizes that there are no wet footprints to mop up. And beyond that, the door is locked from the inside. He starts to freak out a little bit, thinking that the girl had cleaned up the footprints and she'd locked the door and who was this? So he starts looking around the entire gas station to which the girl does not turn up. The entire rest of the night, he said he had a sick feeling in his stomach and he felt something was very, very off. So the following day, he came in when it wasn't his shift, but he knew his boss would be there to ask his boss what had went on and why Marshall's daughter was there in that type of headspace. The boss looked at him in a very, very uncomfortable way and told him if he's trying to be a smart guy, cut it out, to which Grayson was incredibly confused. Grayson goes on to ask him what he's talking about, that he wasn't trying to be a smart guy, and what did he need to stop? To which the boss's face went completely white, and he asked Grayson with the most serious tone, are you serious? You saw this. Tell me everything. Grayson goes on to tell him the story, and as he does, his boss starts to sweat and has goosebumps all over his body. Why might you ask? It turns out that Marshall, years and years before, had lost his daughter. His daughter had lost control on a rainy night and ended up in the ditch on the side of the road. She had called for her father to come and pick her up, but in the time that she was waiting there out in the rain for him to get her, another car lost control, killing his daughter. And by the time Marshall got to her, she was already gone. Now what's really interesting is both the boss and Grayson never told Marshall about this. I guess the boss had explained to Grayson that the reason he'd given him a job there and was so supportive of him was because he had spiraled severely after the loss of his daughter because he felt as though if he'd had gotten there five minutes earlier, she'd still be alive today. They thought that hearing an experience like this at his age could send him into a spiral or terrify him or upset him, so they never told him. But to this day, Grayson knows that the spirit of Marshall's daughter came to visit him at the gas station that night and that perhaps her spirit is still waiting for him to come and pick her up. That's heartbreaking. This next case has to do with a girl named Alina. Now, Alina didn't typically work night shift. In fact, where she worked didn't even really have a night shift position. However, she worked in a law firm that was working on a massive case, and the boss had told everybody that should they need to stay past their regular work hours or should they desire to stay past their regular work hours, they could request a key to lock up and stay later in the office. And on this particular evening, Alina did just that. Alina says that she remembers it being like any other night late at the office. She'd made herself a cup of coffee, the night cleaners left, and she was alone in the office. Now, Alina said she's never been somebody who's paranoid or afraid. She doesn't believe in the paranormal. She's not afraid that bad things are going to happen because she always tries to stay in a positive headspace. And so on this evening, she had no reason to go into her late night work shift thinking that anything would go wrong. For a couple of hours, she sat there at her desk working away. Her husband texted her asking her what she wanted for dinner, that he was gonna leave it out on the counter for her, and she just went back to work. She said that it was around midnight and she was getting ready to wrap up within the next hour or so when she hears her desk phone ring. Now, one thing that she mentioned was that the company had their phone number, but in order for her particular phone to ring in her office, they would require knowing her extension or getting transferred by the receptionist, whom was not there. So whoever was calling was directly calling Alina. Alina says she answers up the phone and she hears like a crackling coming through the line. She says, hello? 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 To which nobody answers. So she hung up the phone and went to go back to her work when immediately the phone rang again. Alina says she picked up the phone and all she heard come through the other side was, open the door. Alina goes, excuse me, who is this? 
and all the person says is, I'm outside, you need to open the door. Alina goes, I'm not expecting anybody and I'm about to be leaving. I'm sorry, you'll have to come back during office hours. To which he says, open the door. Alina says that she hung up the phone and sat there for a couple of seconds, very confused because the voice was both demanding and sinister. She said at this point, she pulled up the security cameras to look outside to where she saw a man in a long black jacket with a hat on and a face mask. Now she described it as a face mask that we all knew and loved during a very interesting year of our lives. And so she was a little bit confused as to whether or not they were trying to hide their identity or if they were trying to protect themselves. Alina says she tried to ignore the individual and continue working, but every time she would refer back to the cameras, he would just be staring at the front doors looking in. Alina said around 15 minutes went by when she suddenly received another phone call. Alina answered the phone and immediately knew it was him and said, you need to leave. I have you on camera, I can see you, and it's time for you to leave. The man only responded one sentence to her before hanging up. He said, your cameras will do you no good. I'm already here, and trust me, I'm meant to be here. Alina says she went to ask him what the hell he was talking about when he'd hung up once again. Now, Alina says for another 20 minutes, she was looking through the camera and she could see that he was still standing there. He was still peering in the windows and waiting. Unfortunately, he kept calling with a number that she was unable to even see on a call log or call back. It was completely anonymous. So she was at a loss for words of what to do. When the next phone call would come in, he started off the phone call by saying he knew who she was and she told him that this wasn't funny, who would ever put him up to it needs to stop, that she wasn't afraid. And he replied, is that so, Alina, at her last name. He started telling her that he knew where she lived, he knew what office she was in, and he just kept repeating that he was meant to be there. At this point, Alina started having a really bad feeling and felt trapped in the office as she would have to walk outside to get to her vehicle. And her vehicle was the only vehicle in the parking lot at the time, making it stand out to anybody who may be wanting to do whatever to her. Alina took her cell phone and called the police, but during her time on the phone with the police, he would call once again. When Alina would answer, she would immediately tell him that she was on the phone with police and that he better watch out. Now at this point, Alina had stopped watching the cameras as the dispatcher was telling her where to go inside of the office while she waited for the police to get there. When the police would arrive, the man was no longer there. But after reviewing the footage, Shortly after that final phone call where she had said she called the police, the man starts to slowly walk away towards some bushes near her car. You see the man crouch down and walk off into the distance. When the police investigated the area, there was a picture of Alina and a knife next to it in the bushes. The man was never caught, was never identified, and the number was not traceable. To this day, Alina has no idea who it was, how they knew she was there alone, or her extension number, or what they wanted. She says that she never works late or any night shift ever again, and rightfully so. This final story begins with a 34-year-old nurse named Roy. Now, at this particular point in Roy's life, he described himself as very to the point, very analytical, and not somebody who believed in what he could not physically see with his own eyes or touch with his own hands. Despite working in a critical department within the hospital, he didn't really believe in the other side. He wasn't somebody who believed in life after death, that believed in ghosts or spirits, or that we are spiritual beings having an earthly experience. That was until his night shift one night where everything would change. Roy said that there was one patient that they'd had for quite some time that was pulling on the heartstrings of everybody on the floor. It was a 22 year old girl who was critically ill and they knew that it wasn't looking very good for her. Now her family was very, very close with her and very, very religious. But unfortunately her brother 
whom she was very close with, lived across state and wasn't able to cut time off work or come until they knew it was in the final hours or days. Now on this particular day during the day, they had given the family the warning that they felt as though she wasn't going to make it through the night, to which the family notified the brother who was rushing over. As it shifted from day shift to night shift, Roy was now on shift and he had seen the parents leave her room to go and grab dinner quickly as they hadn't ate all day. Now unfortunately, which actually happens quite a bit I've heard, while the family stepped away, she passed away peacefully in her bed. Now because the family was away downstairs grabbing food, they just left her in the room, unhooked her from all the machines, and allowed for the family to come and process this. At this particular point in time, Roy remembers passing by the room knowing that she was passed and that the family was still downstairs and hearing what sounded like the patient's voice screaming out, BEAR! 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 Now, he was shocked by this because she was in her own private room. There should have been nobody else in it. So he started wondering if perhaps it was a family member that had come back up and he just hadn't noticed. So he walked back into the room to which there was nobody other than her resting body. Now at this point he was confused, thinking that either he was already overtired or he was hearing something from up the hallway and just thought that it came from that room. But as he went to walk out of the room, he said he felt a breeze behind him and a whisper of bear. Where's bear? At this point, Roy thinks he's losing his mind entirely. And within 15 to 20 minutes later, her parents arrived back up to the devastating news that their daughter had passed away. Obviously, they were devastated. They went into the room to spend time with her. And after a couple of hours, her brother shows up at the hospital. At some point while the mother, father, and brother were in the room with her saying their goodbyes and spending time with her, they had called Roy into the room because the brother wanted to know if she had passed peacefully or what that looked like for her, if she was in any sort of pain. At this point, Roy, comforting the family, said that she had passed as peacefully as possible and that all of her pain was over. Now at this point, the brother was said to have walked over, rubbed her head, and said, I'm right here, bunny. Bear is here, bunny. Now, as Roy was walking out of the room, he hears this, and he stops dead in his tracks, and as he does, he feels that same energy and breeze on his neck. Roy turns around and says, if you don't mind me asking, what does bunny and, and bear mean? To which the brother goes on to say that his sister was his best friend, especially as they were growing up. And throughout their childhood at one point, their grandparents before passing had gifted them each a bunny and a bear. And because they loved their bunny and bear stuffed animals so much, it became their nicknames for one another all throughout life. Now again, the brother hadn't been to the hospital not once since his sister was admitted, and Roy had no idea that she called her brother Bear. So how had he heard her yelling out and calling out in the night after passing for Bear, unless her spirit was looking for him before crossing on? After this experience, Roy started talking to some of his other co-workers and hearing crazy experiences they've had, and he started to become a believer. And to this day, he knows that there is so much more beyond our physical realm, because he knows that he heard her calling out for Bear. And there's no way that was a coincidence. Well, you guys, those are the three bone-chilling night shift horror stories. If you guys want a longer version of this video where we dive into a whole bunch more of night shift horror stories, definitely let me know down in the comment section below. But that is it for today's video. Which one did you enjoy the most? Have you ever worked night shift and did you have any terrifying experiences? 
and would you ever work night shift? Definitely let me know down in the comment section below. And that is it for today's video. Once again, I would just absolutely love to thank June's Journey for sponsoring today's video. I will have a link at the very top of my description for you to download June's Journey and my QR code here for you on the screen. Thank you so much to June's Journey for sponsoring. If you guys are new to my channel or you are just not yet subscribed but you enjoy my content, I would love it if you would go ahead and click that subscribe button. And please give this video a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Remember, my loves, do all things with kindness, and until tomorrow, I love you. Bye, guys.